Welcome back to We Want Picks. I'm Artem MMA, and this week I'm going to be talking about Dana White's Contender Series Week Number Four for the Contender Series 2023 season. And last week I got Greek. Gianni the Greek beat me on my picks, and we cannot let that happen again for the rest of the season. It's actually been a very, very rough season for my picks, unfortunately. Been struggling a little bit. So this time around, I have actually watched my tape study twice over. I'm two weeks ahead on picks because I've got to write the article every single Monday the week before the events is even on. So I've actually gone through and did my tape study last week and then i've done the tape study again this week i'm not going to be talking about odds in this video as well because i'm recording this before the odds even drop that could be a good thing because unfortunately it hasn't really worked out for me in the past but as i do say i do all of my tape study and my research before the odds even drop for the contender series but before we do get into it though you do have the we want picks premium membership service and with that service you do get the picks about a week early as i did allude to because i do write my article every single week and it is going to be including my contender series article which is going to be over a week in advance for the contender series picks and as well as that you do get all of angelo's and jacob's bets and all of so all of the tools as well that can you can use to help get your own bets and now with all that being said let's get into the predictions so kicking off the card is going to be carlos Prates taking on mitch ramirez and as you can tell from that massive chest tattoo that he does have Carlos Prates is a Muay Thai striker that is exactly how he fights. He's very, very technical on the feet. He's got very good kicks. And one thing that I noticed about Carlos Prates is he is so, so fast. And he throws a lot of head kicks. Like almost every third strikes, sometimes every second strike he throws is a head kick. He just throws so many kicks. And the reason why he does that is he's kicking his opponent's arms so that eventually after the arms get a bit sore from blocking, they drop. And that leaves the head kick open. And it has worked for him very, very well recently because he has got two head kick KOs back to back which is very very impressive he is going to be taking on Mitch Ramirez now Mitch Ramirez he has actually fought at 155 pounds in the past so I expected when I was going to go into his tape study that it was going to be a little bit small for 170 but he's built up a lot of muscle in a relatively short period of time because Mitch Ramirez does not look like a, like a lightweight fighter at 170 at all I believe there was a rumor that he was meant to be on the ultimate fighter but he didn't end up getting there. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is what he said in his XMMA interview. And speaking of XMMA, I'm a massive fan of this promotion. I do love XMMA, and he did get a very good win over Jeremy Holloway in that matchup there, where he did finish the fight off with leg kicks. Towards the end of the fight, Jeremy Holloway, you could just tell that he, his legs were done. And, uh, you know, Ranieris went out there and uh, exposed that in the third round and knocked him out with leg kicks, or well, TKO'd him with leg kicks. One thing that I will say about XMMA, though, is uh juliana miller's commentary can be quite hard to listen to but mitch ramirez he can wrestle he can grapple when he's on the feet he does have a very sort of squared sort of style or squared stance i guess you could say which is going to leave him very open to a lot of straight punches that carlos Prates does throw but the way that he does hold his hands he does hold his hands very high he's got a pretty high guard i think that carlos Prates, as long as he doesn't get taken down should be able to win this fight and be the much better striker against mitch ramirez carlos Prates in the past the reason why he has lost so much in the past is because he has had bad takedown defense but that takedown defense recently has made rapid improvements he hasn't been taken down for a very very long time opponents do try and take him down but they can't get him down his takedown defense is very good but the thing is he's not really taking on great wrestlers because he is taking on guys that for the most part are just kind of bjj guys or muay thai guys over in brazil but for Mitch Ramirez, I think that he does have a path to victory if he uses his wrestling. On the feet, he is very dangerous, but I think he's not as technical as Carlos Prates. And I do believe that he does leave himself open. So I am actually going to go with Carlos Prates to win this matchup by first round knockout, like he has done for most of his recent fights. I'm going to go with Prates to win this matchup by knockout in the very first round. And the next one, we're going to have another former glory kickboxer and Yusri Balgari take on Marco Tulio Silva. And the reason why I say another one is because in week number one, Cesar Almeida was able to get a contract. So let's see if Yusri Balgari can make it 2-0. This is going to be a very, very fun fight. Yusri Balgari, if you are unfamiliar with him, has an insane record in kickboxing. He's got a lot of fights against some really, really good guys like Israel Adesanya. He fought him twice. He fought Alex Bahia three times, including a win over Alex Bahia. He's even beaten Jason Wilness as well, who was a fantastic glory kickboxer as well donovan weiss did beat him but he's also a fantastic striker he beat him twice but he was actually meant to take on matish pinyas and if that fight happened that would have been 
fantastic but unfortunately it didn't but when it comes down to mma you can tell that yushu belgari is a fantastic striker the way that he does kind of hold his stance is very interesting though because he does crouch down a lot he is six foot five but he crouches down a lot and his head is kind of pushed out a little bit and he kind of got his arms out like this and the way that he avoids strikes is very very interesting and very effective because he kind of sees everything coming and he just kind of moves his head back and out of the way he's got insane head movement he's got insane at distance management and the way that he kind of moves he, he always has a, a counter ready to go when someone does kind of rush forward and that is what marco tulia silva does you do see that he's got the shoot box background and you do see when you watch his fights he is 100 a shoot box fighter very very aggressive muay thai he's got good wrestling as well he goes for takedowns his grappling is actually probably one of the weaker part of his games which is interesting coming from shooter box but he's very very aggressive on the feet and I actually think this might be a bad matchup for Marco Tulio Silva. On paper, though, I was going into tape study thinking that Silva was going to be like one of the better prospects to come out of Dana White's contender series, especially at 185, but because he's beaten so many good guys. When I actually watched his fight, I wasn't actually as impressed as I kind of expected to be. And I actually think that this could be a pretty bad matchup for him unless he gets the takedowns. When he did take on Well Oliveira, he did dive in and get a good takedown there, but he did end up getting reversed after getting a couple of submission attempts being put on him. He did end up winning that fight by knockout, though. Yusri Belgari has had takedown defense problems in the past. As I said, he has had quite mixed success in MMA. But I think that maybe in this matchup here, I think that his takedown defense is improving. He is training at Tekshira MMA and Fitness. He's training with Alex Bahia as well. So he's probably getting some pretty good sparring in there. But Marco Tulio Silva, the way that he strikes, he does rush forward. He's very aggressive. And I can see Yusri Belgari getting knocked out with the way that he does hold his head and hold his style, sort of his stance, I mean, sorry. But I can also see... Yusri Belgari getting out of the way of all of these fight, all of these strikes that he's throwing and just landing a really nice counter. And I'm actually going to go with Yusri Belgari to win this matchup. I think that he, these counters are going to be money for him. I think he's going to see everything that Marco Tulio Silva is going to be throwing at him. I think he is going to land the counter strike. So the pick is Yusri Belgari. But with the way that he does hold his stance in a very interesting way, maybe at one point we could see him get knocked out by a lesser striker. But I don't think it's going to be in this fight. I'm actually going to go with Yusri Belgari to win this matchup here. Maybe it could be a could be a pick to fade because my picks in the past haven't been too good. But I do genuinely believe in Belgari. I think he's a fantastic striker, and I think that he does get it done over Marco Tulio Silva. The next fight is going to be Timothy Kwamba taking on Matteo Vogel at Featherweight. And I feel like this could be one of the hardest fights to pick on the card. And I think this fight is actually very, very competitive, despite what the Tapology votes do say, because Tapology is very, very heavy on Vogel in this matchup. 89% of people picking Vogel, and I am one of those people. I am picking Matteo Vogel, but this is not a confident pick at all. And I think that Timothy Kwamba actually does have a very good chance at winning this matchup. Kwamba in this fight is going to be the much much better striker, but where Mateo Vogel is going to be much better is in the grappling. Kwamba actually does have very good wrestling himself as well, so maybe he could defend some takedowns from Vogel, but I do believe that if any point in this matchup the fight does go down to the ground, Vogel, I think, will be able to submit Timothy Kwamba. The way that Vogel does grapple is very entertaining. This guy goes for uh, submissions all the time. He's very dangerous off his back. He's very dangerous when he gets onto his opponent's back because he does have a very good rear naked choke, but he goes for knee bars, he goes for arm bars, he goes for anything. If Mateo Vogel is on the ground, he is going for a submission. He's not necessarily a submission over position guy. But one thing that is for sure, he is always looking for something. He's always trying to finish the fight when the fight is down to the ground. And for Timothy Kwamba, he is the much better striker in this matchup, as I did say. But he usually strikes to wrestle. He does get a lot of takedowns in his fights. And he can be in some very fun fights as well. He's going to be much, much faster on the feet than Mateo Vogel. But I think in this one here, I think the offensive wrestling needs to go. Because I do believe that even if Timothy Kwamba does go out there and take down Mateo Vogel, Mateo Vogel is so good off his back. Mateo Vogel, in my opinion, is the much better grappler in this matchup as well. Whereas when Timothy Kwamba does fight, he strikes to wrestle. I think he's going to have to just strike and defend takedowns in this matchup. Kwamba has lost by submission before. It was against Ivan Tena, and Ivan Tena was able to kind of reverse some positions and get the re-naked choke in the first round. And I think that we're going to see Mateo Vogel do something similar. I think we're going to see Mateo Vogel come out into this matchup and not strike with Kwamba. I think that Mateo Vogel as well has fought the much better competition. I think he's going to come out here with a good game plan. I think he's going to be constantly shooting for takedowns. I think he's not even just going to be shooting for takedowns to get the fight to the ground. I think he's going to be clinching to try and take the back because I have seen him take the back 
from the clinch position as well, kind of like Aljamain Sterling does. I think he's going to be looking to do that. I think he's going to be looking to get the fight down to the mat. He's going to be looking to do many, many different things in the grappling. I think Mateo Vogel is going to come out with a very, very heavy wrestling and grappling game plan and submit Timothy Kwamba within two rounds. But if Kwamba goes out there and knocks out Mateo Vogel, I honestly wouldn't be that surprised. In my opinion, this is a fight to probably avoid unless fight doesn't go the distance is, is a good bet at all. I think that could be good because it's either Kawamba by KO or Vogel by submission. But I'm on Vogel. I do think he does manage to get the submission within two rounds in this matchup here. And then we move all the way up to the heavyweights. You've got Chandler Cole taking on Thomas Peterson. And this fight could be very fun, but it also could be not so fun. I am going to be picking Thomas Peterson to win this one, though. I think it's his fight to lose. I think this is actually a very good stylistic matchup for Thomas Peterson with the way that he does fight. He's a very, very heavy wrestling style. He does have power on the feet, but for the most part, he's just trying to go out there and get takedowns and take people down. He pushes you guys up against the clinch kind of as soon as the fight starts or as soon as like a restart happens after a break. He will push you up against the cage and take you down and win by ground and pound after that most of his wins are in the first rounds however most of his wins aren't really against the best level of competition lfa definitely built him up to fight wildo cortez acosta and wildo cortez acosta went on to win that fight and is now in the ufc but since then again <laughs> lfa has built him up and now he's taking on chandler cole and dana white's contender series i do think thomas peterson is a lot better than people do think so i think at heavyweight having a very good wrestling style actually can get you very very far at heavyweight because a lot of the guys there are strikers and Chandler Colt is a striker he is five foot ten and he is uh very very wide he does weigh in at the heavyweight limit and not a lot of that weight is muscle he does remind me a lot of Chris Barnett and he is very fun to watch man I was watching Chandler Cole's fights so I was like yeah he's so fun to watch I loved his what the ultimate fighter fight um actually to be fair it wasn't the best fight in the world but it was so so fun because Chandler Cole he's very short for the weight class he's very wide for the weight class but man is he scrappy dude and on the feet he's always going to be live to get a KO but I do believe that Thomas Peterson could go out there and take down Chandler Cole and win this fight by ground and pound to KO. There's not really a lot to talk about with the matchup, Chandler Cole. Just think of Chris Barnett, and you've kind of got Chan, uh, Chandler Cole. And then for Thomas Peterson, he's a wrestler. Almost think Carl Williams. And you've got Thomas Peterson there. I think that Thomas Peterson does go out there. I think he takes Chandler Cole down. And I do think that he wins by ground and pound TKO in the first or the second round. Giving Peterson to win this matchup by ground and pound TKO. The final fight of the night is going to be between Dylan Salvador and Balaji OK. And Dylan Salvador is another fighter from Glory Kickboxing who is going to be competing for a UFC contract. If you do look through his record, he's got a lot of Muay Thai and kickboxing experience. He's got a win over Giga Jakadze in kickboxing in 2017. And also, if you go back to 2015, he actually has a win over Sijichai and then a loss to Sijichai in 2017. But Sijichai is a very good kickboxer and Muay Thai fighter as well. In one championship, as you can see, he has had a lot of fights and a lot of wins. And one of those losses is to Dylan Salvador in Muay Thai, who is going to be fighting in this matchup here against Balaji OK. Dylan Salvador, though, if you do look at his record, it's quite deceiving because you do look at him, numbers on a page, four wins by submission, one win by knockout. So I went out there and I watched as many fights as I could because I really wanted to know. How does Dylan Salvador find himself in these positions to get the submissions when he is a striker? And that's what he does. He doesn't really go for takedowns at all. He can go for takedowns, but he doesn't really unless he's in trouble, unless he's hurt, which he has been before. But he just kind of ends up knocking people down or just ends up in positions where he can get the submission. That's how he does it. He did take on this guy, Jack Ungir Jumaev, and he did strike with him for the whole first round. And then the second round, Jumaev started going for some takedowns. And then the third round, Jakai Jumaev had slowed down a lot and Dylan Salvador ended up on top and got the Von Flew choke. Very, very good win. Very good submission win there. He took on Armin Ospinov. And this is a fight that Armin Ospinov was looking very, very good and he was landing a lot of good strikes onto Dylan Salvador. He knocked him down in the second round, but... I think what happened was maybe Ospinov just gassed out completely and he just wouldn't get up off his stool after the second round. So Dylan Salvador wins due to TKO in that matchup in a fight which he was potentially going on to lose because Ospinov was having a lot of success in that matchup. And now his opponent is Balaji Oki. Balaji Oki is 100% the best prospect out of Belgium right now. He is actually quite big for the weight class as well. You do look at Balaji Oki. He is built, man. Like He is a very, very big, strong dude for 155 pounds. And doesn't really have the most good wins on his record. Yes, he's beaten some good guys like Naya Malikan, who's 13-0. But if you look at Naya Malikan's record, pretty much every person that he has fought had no experience at all. 
And um, but the thing is, though, with Bellagioki, he's a striker as well, which is good for Dylan Salvador. He can wrestle, which isn't so good for Dylan Salvador. But when it comes down to the striking, Bellagioki, he's a very much a power striker. He doesn't throw a lot of volumes, but he does throw a lot of jabs. And if you do watch his fight against Naeem Ali Khan, I would actually recommend you watch this fight because it is a very fun fight to watch, especially in the first round. In the first round, these two guys. They go to war, man. They just absolutely scrap it out. Both guys land really good shots. Bilagi Oki's landing a lot of jabs, and Malakan is pressuring forward and landing a lot of bombs. But that pressure did give Bilagi Oki a lot of problems in that fight. He did not look too good when he was forced to fight backwards. And I think Dylan Salvador is going to be a guy that is going to pressure forward against Oki and put Oki on the back foot, where he won't be as good of a striking as when he is moving forward. Oki can wrestle, but I think Oki's biggest problem is his gas tank. But uh, Bilagi Oki, he slowed down a lot in that matchup against Malikian. He didn't really like gas out completely, but at the end of the first round, you could see that Bilagi Oki was actually a little bit tired. The second and third round roll along, and Bilagi Oki is definitely a little bit gassed. And Dylan Salvador, I've never really seen this guy have gas tank problems. He did go to the third round in his last fight. He looked good. He looked like the fresher fighter. And he is a very, he doesn't have a very ridiculously high volume output, but he does have good volume output. He is going to be landing more volume than Oki. I think he's going to be chopping the legs of Oki as well because he throws a lot of leg kicks. I'm going to go Dylan Salvador to win this matchup. I do believe that he can win against Oki here. I think he's going to land more volume. And if it does go down to the ground, Salvador's grappling is <laughs> surprisingly good. And he's been taking on much better competition as well. He took on Ospinov, who's 11-4. He took on Jakun Gejimaev, who's 8-2. He lost to Ali Zibian, who's 6-2. And, and a 6-1 and opponent, he did win that matchup there. And if you look at Oki, losing record. Malikian, who had a padded record, but is a good fighter, to be fair. Uh, debuting guy, 6-2. And 17 and 29 fighter there. So both guys have fought decent competition, but Dylan Salvador has fought the better competition. I'm on the Dylan Salvador side. I think that Oki is going to look good in the first round. I think he's going to slow down a lot in the second round. Salvador's going to be chopping the legs. He's going to be going to the body. And in the third round, Oki is going to be completely gassed out. I think that Salvador is going to find some sort of finish, whether it's by knockout or submission in the third round. So give me Dylan Salvador to win this matchup late in the fight. I think he does find a finish. And that is my picks for week number four to kind of go over it. Carlos Prates KO round one. Guteri Balgari KO on a counter. I've got Matteo Vogel to win by submission within two rounds. I've got Thomas Peterson to win by knockout in the first or the second round due to ground and pounds. And Dylan Salvador by very late finish. And I will be live during this card on my US on my YouTube channel. And I will be doing a fight companion for Dana White's Contender Series week number four. Let me know what you think of those comments. Uh, let me know what you think of those picks in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next one.